Okay, so this is going to be a test video checking out the possibilities of the new delay, and really any delay, that you can use in Studio One or any other DAW that you want to use. So, a few things. One, I know that this is not groundbreaking information. This is some basic stuff about delay, but kind of want to maybe give a little bit of a different flavor to it based on uh, my own experiences and how I uh, utilize the delay as more than just an effect that blends into the background, but can also be used as a foreground kind of a thing. So, my example on this is going to be a Queen song called The Prophet's Song. If you don't know this song, you should go check it out. It's not something that ever got, um, I don't know, it was, maybe it was released as a single, I doubt it. It's a really long song, kind of like Bohemian Rhapsody. It's actually on the same album. Um, it's called The Prophet's Song, written by Brian May, and uses a whole lot of delay throughout the piece, like a lot of their earlier stuff did, and a lot of the Brian May guitar uh, effects and that sort of thing did as well in songs like Brighton Rock um, and a bunch of other ones. Um, and if you've ever seen them in any of their live stuff, he has a whole solo section that's built around uh, round robin delay kinds of effects. Now, part of that effect is a stereo deal. So I want to talk about that. Um, first of all, one piece of this effect is I'm only using a single feedback. Now, in the case of the analog delay, you can see that over here uh, with this feedback knob is set to 0%. Now, that might be a little bit counterintuitive. You would think 0% has no feedback whatsoever, but it doesn't. It has a single feedback. Now, we also have um, the time synced to the tempo, and right now I have it set at a half note. Right, so my tempo is set at uh, 72, which is give or take what that original song was. What we have uh, tempo-wise is something like this. Right, and so when I click this uh, power on on the, on the analog delay there, you're going to hear instead of two, three, four, you're going to hear every other one of those where the repeat happens. So here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So you can hear it's basically half time. Okay, so here's the tempo at 72. About that. And when we listen to that in the uh, effect, you'll hear it come basically back in at half of that amount of time. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, to do that in a stereo split where I'm going to be up center, first delay will be over on the left, and the next delay will be over on the right, I'm going to hit this little width sum right in... Oh, and by the way, you have to have the effect on in order to make adjustments. So I'm going to stop talking for a minute. And you'll see what I did there is I put the width at 100%, so I'm fully out to the left and right, and I've got it set on the sum setting, uh, which basically is going to take my middle channel, it's going to throw it to both sides. If I wanted to do a two-channel thing, I would have to have my vocal over on one side, and then the delay would be on the opposite side. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for one at the middle, one to the left, one to the right. That's my 0% feedback. So here's what that would do. All right, you hear my middle one and one of each of the others. And so how this might be used in a case, I'm going to use the exact line out of that uh, Prophet song. 
So here's an example of how that would sound where you actually get a repeat back so it works like an old, you know, row, row, row your boat kind of around where you get to harmonize with yourself in cycle. So you kind of have to plan this ahead of time to know what you're going to do. And that's why I'm using a song that I already know. So in this case, uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start right at the middle of the middle section of that song. And this is what it would do. Ah, people, can you hear me? And so you can hear that that last note was unison for a while. And of course, I know Freddie Mercury, who is. But that's the idea. So when we go on to that next section, it's got a little bit more rhythm to it, right? So it's not as uh, lined up. And so you get something like this. And so that kind of a round effect leads to very interesting melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic things that you can do with a delay that are not just about a delay effect. Now, in a regular delay effect, I might have, you know, something more uh, where I would use the high cut and low cut um, to kind of, you know, make those delays be either more mid-range or maybe just on the high end of things um, to kind of uh, make it so that the delays frequency wise aren't is in the way, right? So let's see, what does that look like? Check, check, check. Test, test, test. So you hear those two after effects are a much um, different tonality on that. And so the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to um, bring the uh, feedback up. Now I'm using this as an insert effect, so um, my dry wet is set pretty, uh, pretty low, but I'm actually going to bring the feedback up some, and then I'm going to bring the dry wet down some, so there's not as much of those delays in there, um, and they kind of trail off into uh, a, a number of them instead of just a single one. So here's that. But I'm going to make them not quite as loud. So Trying to talk over them is not impossible. Now that can be used more musically when it's actually in the mix, and that kind of just fills in some of that extra background on the vocal. Now I'm going to take these uh, low cuts back out of there. So now you can hear a little bit more. You can hear a little bit more that those delays are a lot more like the original, um, like they were in my first example. And some of the fun that you can have with this stuff is uh, when you get into automating some of these parameters. One of the ones that's fun to automate there is the feedback, right? So if you want to get one of those crazy out of control feedback things, you can automate this knob directly in your track and you would wind up with something more like this. This is out of control. Out of control. And then shut it up when it starts turning into a complete feedback mess. Um, but you can get those things to pile up really quickly and really effectively to make something sound out of control. It's a great fun thing to do. The other thing that can be fun is using a more rhythmic kind of a thing. So again, we're here at the uh, eighth note dotted. I'm going to run a, an experiment real quick and then I'll do a couple examples of how that might be able to be used.
So those are just a few examples of some of the stuff you could do rhythmically that, again, can be very fun for effect, very fun for rhythm, and goes beyond just the standard amount of delay that we typically hear in use um, that just gives some more width, that gives some more movement, that gives some more um, kind of reverb-like effects. This is some fun that you can have. And of course, I haven't even touched the speed, the amount, the motor uh, changes, or this new drive knob um, on that delay. There are a ton of things that you can do with delay. It doesn't matter if you happen to be using this one or not. Delay is a whole lot of fun. Did you find this video useful? Let me know by subscribing, by liking, by sharing it. Uh, ring the notification bell for when I might have other videos up. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time.